Hello, this is Jeff Sullivan with Dell Tech Center. This is a demo showing the setup of replication between two Equalogic groups. The groups could exist within the same site or at a uh, one on primary site and one at a remote location across a network. First thing that we'll do is we'll open up a web browser and start the group manager for each one of the groups that we're using in this demonstration. So for Equalogic Group 1, which I've connected to here, I'm going to go ahead and put in my username and password. And then once that starts, I'll go ahead and open up another tab and log into our second Equalogic Group which I happen to call Equalogic Group 2. And again, we'll put in our group admin uh, name and then our password and click on OK. Once that opens up, I'm going to go ahead and flip back over to uh, Equalogic Group 1. And I'm going to click on the Replication Partner section. The first thing we're going to do is introduce each of uh, the group groups to each other. So I'm going to configure a partner. I'm going to put in the partner identification. So this is the group name for the other group. So equal logic group two. And I'm going to put in the IP address for it. Could put in the description. I'm going to click on next. I'm going to put in the contact information for the uh, the group owner. And then here's a password for the handshake. So on the top, you know, for the the partner we use for authentication, on the bottom it's what the other partner uh, is providing. So going both ways. For simplicity, I kept them the same. And we'll do this same thing on the other side. The delegated space is how much I'm going to store from the partner. So in this case, uh, being that I have about two terabytes free on this particular group, I'm going to keep it around 1200 and I'm going to put it in my default, uh, which is my SATA pool. So here's a summary of my settings. I'm going to go ahead and say finish, and it's the partners configured. So now I'm going to go ahead and move on over to the other group and do the same thing. So I'm going to configure a replication partner for group two as well. I'm going to put in the group name of the other group, so Equalogic Group 1, and I'll put in its IP address. Not, I got that wrong, I need to correct that IP address, but to fix that, put it back to 10. There we go. Click Next. Again, if you know contact information, maybe is at a remote site, you want to know who, who to call in the event, uh, this one needs to be managed. Click Next, and I'm going to make the passwords match what I put on the other side so that the uh, the two can authenticate. And if you get this wrong, when you kick off a uh, replication, you'll get an error message. So I also put in 1,200 or one, you know, 1 1.2 terabytes. And now I've configured replication on both sides. Now I'm going to select a volume. In this case, it's a uh, it's a volume that's serving our file server, which is on an NX3000. I'm going to right mouse click, and if you didn't have a replication partner, the, the bottom configure replication would, uh, would be grayed out, but since we now have a replication partner, it's there. So I click that, uh, and you notice I don't have enough space to go 200% of reserve, so I'm going to drop this down to 120% of the uh, space, the replica volume reserve, and I'm going to leave the 100% for the local. Go ahead and click on next. Uh, you could keep a failback snapshot if you wanted to. Click next and then finish. You know, ask if you want to go ahead and create a, a volume replica now, and you could do a, a manual replication if, if you know, if you had a a small connection between the two sites, but in this case I just went ahead and let it do a regular replication. 
you know, refresh down here in just a second. There it is. And so you can see that the replication is now in progress. There it is on the other side as well. So we have set everything up correctly, got our passwords correct, so it is it is replicating. So now I'm, you know, going to go ahead and I want this particular volume to be, uh, you know, replicated across site nightly. So I'm going to go ahead and configure a schedule or create a schedule, and it's just right mouse click on the volume again and click create schedule. We'll give it a name. We'll choose how often we want it to run, and then we'll. Uh, and then after that, go ahead and click next. So in this case, I'm doing a, a daily schedule. I want to do. I do want to go ahead and enable the schedule. And I have lots of parameters here. I'm just going to leave it on every night at uh, midnight. And I'm going to drop the number of replicas down to uh, just keeping one active because I really don't have the space to do more than that in this particular setup. And that's about it. Click on finish, and our our replication schedule is set up. And that's how easy it is to set up replication on uh, Equalogic between two groups. So I went ahead and let this run overnight, let the replication finish, so just to show you what happened. Um, we had our one that we kicked off finish and then it ran the one we scheduled as well. So you can see that they're both there. You can also see the replication history. And again, we've selected the volume on our uh, EQL2 group, which had the volume to begin with. And so you can see how much it transferred. It was an incremental replication of 9 megabytes. So one of the things that you can do with this is promote the volume or clone it so that you can work with it. Let's say our, our group went down and we needed to access the volume we could easily go to the group that we replicated the volume to, select the volume like we just did, and then say clone. You could also promote it to a volume if you didn't want to use a clone, if you didn't have the space for it. But in this case, we're just going to do a clone. I'm going to take the uh, reserve way down so I don't have to use up as much space since this is just going to be for a test. Go ahead and put, you know, my restricted access just like I would on any volume that I create. Go ahead and say next and then finish. And over here on the left hand side you'll see I now have the volume and we'll go ahead and connect to that on our host. Uh, just click through here and show you it's just a typical volume out. Start up the iSCSI initiator. I'm going to refresh my targets. And there's a new one there. Go ahead and scroll on over. Make sure I've got the right one. There it is, NX3000 for test. I'm going to log on to it. In this case, I'm just going to say OK. Start up our disk management. And there it is, disk 3, 1200 gigabytes. Go ahead and make it online. going to be G colon. So again, if I wanted, you know, to restore this volume maybe for testing or in the event of an outage, it's just that easy to clone the replica and then connect it to our system. And there's our lab uh, file server. There's our all of our files that we replicated last night. This is Jeff Sullivan with the Dell Tech Center. Thanks for your time.